So, in this case, we need to make, like I mentioned before, we need to make sure that the direction of the vector we want to try, we want to find the derivative of, it has to be a unit vector because if the vector is not a unit vector, what happens? That's going to give us um, different results. So, in this case, that result will be scaled by the magnitude of the vector that we are finding. For example, if you find the slope, I mean in 2D, that slope, let's say it's one half, right? So is it the same to have a slope of one half than a slope of two? In fact, that's four times the slope, right? So that means if we get that value of two, that's because we multiply by a vector whose magnitude is four. So we need to make sure that we have a unit vector, otherwise, it's not going to give us the correct result. All right, so let's see. Uh, so let's look at another example. So given f of x, y equals 5y cosine 2x, so that's the, the equation or the function that describes the surface. And to ask, they're asking us to find the directional derivative of f at the point pi over 4 comma 1 in the direction of the vector 3 comma negative 6. Well, one thing to notice, first of all, is that this vector is not a unit vector. So first we need to find a unit vector. So that is, we need to find the magnitude of the vector, which is the, the sum of the squares of the components. And that's uh, 9 plus 36. And in this case is 45. root of 45. Okay, so well let's simplify this number 45 that's 9 times 5 the square root of 9 is 3 root of 5. So now we're gonna find a unit vector let's call it um, u with a hat that's the vector 3 comma negative 6 divided by its magnitude and that's gonna give us 3 over, oh, actually just 1 over negative root of 5, comma, negative 2 over root of 5. Okay, so we got the unit vector. Now we may go about finding the partial derivatives of this, um, of this, of this function. Well, so let's find, uh, yes, that's partial of x with respect x. So in this case, we're going to differentiate the cosine function. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, negative 5y sine 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2, which equals to negative 10y sine 2x. And the partial derivative with, of f with respect y, that equals, uh, well, the derivative of y in this case is just 1, and that 1 times all those constants multiplying, that's simply going to be 5 cosine 2x. All right? Let's see. Okay, so we got the partial derivatives. What are we going to do? This time I'm going to use a different notation. And the reason why, again, let me go back to the, to the previous page. Notice how in this case uh, we mentioned that this is like a dot product. This is the dot product between the, okay, let me do the shorthand notation, fx, fy. Those are the partial derivatives. u1, u2. So if we, do, if we do the dot product between these two vectors, uh, fx times u1, that's fx times u1, fy times u2, fy times f sub y times u2. So really this is a dot product. So let's see. So let's find the directional derivative d in the direction of v, or actually u prime, no, not u prime, u unitized of f of x, y. So that's again uh, f x u1 plus f y, f sub y u2. 
f of f, f sub x represents the partial derivative with respect x and f sub y represents the uh, the, the partial derivative with respect to y. So, Uh, so that's the partial, which in this case is negative 10y sine to x times 1 over root of 5 plus Uh, what's that? 5 cosine 2x over uh, times negative 2 over root of 5. Okay, well, so all, that's our, uh, our derivative, our directional derivative uh, expression. So let's find it at the point where, where x equals pi over 4 and y equals to 1. Negative 10 times 1 sine of 2 times pi over 4 times 1 over root of 5 plus 5 cosine of 2 pi over 4 times negative 2 over the root of 5. All right, so let's simplify this. So sine of 2 pi over 4, that's basically sine of pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2, that's 1, isn't it? And that's going to be negative 10 times 1 times 1. That's, gonna be, that's just going to be negative 10. And in this case, uh, cosine of 2 pi over 4, isn't it the same as cosine of pi over 2? And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And well, 0 times whatever quantity, that, that's going to be 0. So in this case, negative 10 times 1 over root of 5, which is the same as negative 10 over root of 5. And if you rationalize this, that's going to be uh, negative 10 root of 5 over 5, which is really negative 2 root of 5. So what is this result telling us? Well. This, is this result is telling us that if we go on this surface at a point where x, pi, x equals to pi over 4 and y equals to 1, the slope is going to be negative 2 root of 5. However, that's not in the direction of x. It's not in the direction of y. It's actually in the direction of v equals 3i minus 6j. All right. Well, what does the sign mean in this case? So suppose we're hiking on a mountain or on a hill, uh, modeled by that function, and we step at that point, and then we, and then from there we count what is it uh, is three units in the x direction and six units down. What is that? What what would that mean in this case? Going we're going. We're hiking downhill, right? Okay. Now. Uh, this set of partial derivatives that we found over here are going to have a special meaning in this case. And that's going to that's going to be the gradient of the of a function. Well, so uh, if we have a function z which is a function f uh, which is a function of x and y and both partials x and both partials with respect x and with respect y exist, well the the gradient which is denoted by this upside down uppercase delta from the Greek alphabet. Uh, that's the vector, uh, well, uh, partial f with respect x, comma, partial f with respect y. Well, uh, what is this symbol? This symbol, it, uh, there's a couple of names for this symbol, either nabla or del. So, and the way we read, do we read that, uh, that expression is, nabla f or nabla or, or del f, right? Well, what is this vector? Because, well, in the previous couple of sections, we were finding the derivatives individually, you know, the derivative with respect x and the derivative with respect y. 
Uh, you can think of this, you know, because this is a vector, and in fact, for those of you who are in linear algebra this semester, uh, well, that's basically a matrix, right? It's a, it's a matrix of one row and two columns. And what do we do with matrices? Well, amongst many other things, store data, right? So you, you can think of this gradient function as a database to store the rate of change in the, direct, in the direction of x and the rate of change in the direction of y. So that you can think of the gradient uh, as, as that database. All right? And well, the thing is, again, going back to put this all together, when we find the dot product between that gradient from, well, that gradient vector with that unit vector that which is the direction in which we want to find the direction of the, the, the derivative of the, oh, what did I say, the, uh, so this is going to be, so this is going to give us the, the directional derivative, that's because again, this nabla f, which is, okay, let me denote it here, the f, dx, the, f dy dotted with the vector u with components u1 comma u2 and again by the dot product all we do is multiply df dx that's going to give us this first term and df dy with u2 that's going to give us that second term and, the, and recall the unit the dot product in this case is not a vector it's actually a scalar so in this case we're multiplying two vectors via the dot product to obtain a scalar and that scalar again it's going to be the directional derivative all right let's have a look at another example uh, to find and in this case we're going to find the gradient so what's the gradient going to be well you'll see well, it's actually something that we already did in the previous couple of sections, but this time we're just going to put it, put both derivatives together and give it a new meaning. So, number one, uh, let's find uh, the gradient. In this case, the gradient is nabla f. That's actually the partial derivative with respect x, comma the partial derivative with respect y. Okay, so let's find the derivative with respect x for the given function. So for the first term, y e to the x, what's the derivative? e to the y e to the x itself, right? For now, y e to the x, and the derivative of x squared y with respect x to x y, right? Comma. Let's find the derivative with respect to y. Well, the derivative of y in the first term is 1 times e to the x. That should be e to the x. And the derivative with respect to y for the second term, x squared y, that's 1 times x squared, which is just going to be x squared. All right? So what are these two expressions for now? So here we essentially have a database to compute the rate of change in the direction of x and the rate of change in the direction of y, all right? But now, okay, we're going to calculate some, some of those. So they want us to find nabla of f at the point 0, comma 2. So that's uh, y equals to 2 e to the 0 plus 2 times 0 to times 2, comma e to the 0 and 0 squared, all right? Okay, so simplifying this, oops, no, it's not prime. So e to the 0, which is 1 times 2, that's a 2, uh, plus 0, that's just 2, comma, e to the 0, which is 1, and 0 squared, that's a 0, so that's 1, all right? So that's the vector, so that's the gradient. What does that mean? Uh, interpreting this result, this is the slope, in the x direction, <clears throat> Thank you.
and this result is the slope in the y direction. All right? And well, later, if we dot this vector with another vector, with another direction vector, that's going to give us the directional derivative. That is the slope in the direction of some other random vector. Well, we're not looking for that this time. We're just looking for the rates of change in res with respect x and with respect y this time. That is, we're storing this data in this vector with one row and two columns. Right. Okay, let's consider the function f of x equals arctan xy. So, number one, they're asking us to find the, the, the gradient, right? not the directional derivative, it's the gradient. And in this case, well, so, oh, so we have to differentiate the arctangent function. So, number one, how about we recall how to differentiate the arctan function? So, arctan. of u prime that's a 1 over 1 plus u squared times du or let me just call it u prime because in this case we're not just going to differentiate with respect x so let me just leave it more in general all right in terms of just u so mini chain rule here we're going to need this mini chain rule as well so how about we find the derivatives so partial f with respect x, that's uh, 1 over 1 plus the quantity xy squared times the derivative of xy with respect x. But what's the derivative of xy with respect x? Y. Y, all right? So that's y, which equals simply y over 1 plus x squared mm, y squared, all right? Let's take now the partial derivative of f with respect y. So that's going to be again 1 plus the quantity xy squared times, in this case, the partial derivative of xy with respect to y, in this case, is x, all right? x over 1 plus x squared y squared. So those are the two derivatives with respect x and y respectively let's put it together in the gradient here so nabla f equals to um, y over 1 plus x squared y squared comma x over 1 plus x x squared y squared okay so that's the gradient that's the answer for the gradient so those are going to give us the expressions again to find the rate of change or the slope in the x direction and the one in the y direction now for letter b they're asking us to find the directional derivative for the function at the point one comma two in the direction of the vector 3 comma 4. Again, keep in mind that this vector is not a unit vector, so we want to make sure that we have a unit vector first. And well, what do we do to get a unit vector? Divide that vector by its magni magnitude. So let's find the magnitude of V. That is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's uh, 9 plus 16. And that equals <clears throat> square root of 25 equals to 5. And well, let's divide that vector. Let's obtain a unit vector u with a hat that's to denote that it is a unit vector. And that's uh, the vector v divided by its magnitude. So that's uh, 3 comma 4 divided by 5. So we're going to have the vector 3 fifths, comma 4 fifths. All right. 
So to find the directional derivative, so they're asking us to find the directional derivative of f in the direction of u at the point 1 comma 2. So number 1, that's going to be the gradient nabla f at the point 1 comma 2 dotted with the unit vector that we obtained from before. So number 1, how about we evaluate the, the gradient at the point 1 comma 2 separately? Let me do that over here. So nabla f at 1 comma 2 and that's uh, y which is 2 over 1 plus 1 squared times 2 squared comma 1 over 1 plus 1 squared 2 squared so that's going to be well the denominator so 1 squared which is 1 2 squared which is 4 4 plus 1 that's uh, 2 over 5 and comma 1 over 5 so what we're going to do now to find the directional derivative in the direction of this vector being unitized this will be, oh I mean at the point 1 comma 2 this will be the vector that we just found 2 over 5, 1 fifth and dot it with the unit vector 3 fifths comma 4 fifths. All right. So let's just do the dot product of these two vectors to give us that directional derivative. So 2 fifths times 3 fifths, that's going to be 6 over 25. And 1 times 4, that's uh, 4 over 25. And that's a 10 over 25, which reduces to 2 fifths. So again, analyzing this situation, well, we are in, um, in a surface uh, described by the function arc tan of x, y. We're going to move to, we're going to go to the point 1 comma 2, and we're going to move in the direction of the vector 3 comma 4. So that's going to give us this slope, all right? So, and in this case, because the slope is positive, that means in this case we're going uphill, all right? Uphill, all right? Okay. So, let's move on to, so in this case, that's the second part of the hand of all. Number one, let's look at, at some applications of the gradient. Well, so, the gradient can give us the direction of steepest descent or steepest ascent. That is, so if we, if we stand on a surface at a given point and you are, for example, you are hiking, you know? So, so let's say you go hiking, all right? You know how these hills have different uh, steepnesses in different directions. Well, so calculus again is going to give us in this case the direction of from from a given point which direction is going to give us uh, the, the steepest ascent or the steepest descent mm -hmm. and well how are we going to go about it well number one let's look at this uh, directional derivative which by the way the directional derivative is a dot product remember how we describe the dot product of a vector as uh, well, number one, u dotted with v. That was one version was the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of theta. Which, and we use this formula or this definition later to find the angle between two vectors. So we're going to bring this definition of the, of the dot product back again, but in this case, for the directional derivative. So the directional derivative in this case, uh, d sub u, so that's uh, gonna, that's gonna be, because again, this is a dot product, so this is gonna be the magnitude of the gradient times the magnitude of this unit vector times cosine of the angle, all right? That's cosine of the angle. Well. 
but we can simplify this expression because check this out what's the magnitude of this unit vector one all right so this will simplify to this expression so this will just become a uh, magnitude of nabla f times cosine theta now in a similar way that we look at this a uh, few sections ago well so this directional derivative will have a maximum and will also have a minimum right well we're, we don't need to go through taking the derivative setting the derivative equal to zero find the critical but no we don't need to do that because for cosine it's really easy to see at which value of beta we have a maximum and at which value we have a minimum so so this is maximized when okay think of the of the cosine function which looks like this zero pi over two pi 3 pi over 2 and well eventually 2 pi all right so for which angle theta is cosine a maximum zero. at zero so in this case well when theta equals to zero and that's because since cosine theta equals to 1 when theta equals to zero. So that's the maximum of the cosine function. And its minimum in this case is <coughs> negative one. But when do we get the minimum in this case? So we get cosine theta equals to negative one when theta equals to pi or 180. So let's say pi, all right? Okay. The directional then is, C, the directional derivative is then zero for theta equals to what value? Five or two. Five or two. Okay, let's stop it. Let's stop over here. All right, remember how two orthogonal vectors, or well, two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. In other words, when they form what angle? A 90 degrees. So see the connection with the beginning? All right. Well, so in this case, that's because Since uh, cosine theta equals zero. And then, well, in this case, we're going to say that the gradient nabla f is orthogonal <clears throat> to that unit vector. Right now, here is a picture. Here is a picture. Well, so if we stand at this point on a surface, let's project this point in on the x y plane. Now, so okay, let me lower it a little bit so I can easily explain. Well, so in this case, from this point, we can go in this direction uphill uh, to its maximum uh, steepness. And that maximum steepness, which is given by this vector uh, right here, it's going. And this vector, again, if we have maybe the sun here. So this vector will cast this shadow right here, right? So that's the direction, that's the direction for which we will go towards the largest value of the steepness in this case. Now, the vector on the back pointing in this direction will give us the direction of smallest descent. And again, this sun right here is casting, well, it's kind of hard to, uh, to relate this vector to the shadow right here. But I think you see that picture, right? So in this case, going down the hill, going up the hill. In this case, the, the smallest and the largest. Now, well, in this case, recall that in this case, this, uh, this directional derivative is orthogonal to the unit vector when theta is 90 degrees. That is, 
this 90 degrees that we're seeing over here and in this case we are going perpendicular to this vector. So what are we doing? So for example, coming back to the hiking example, so we can go uphill at some steepness, we can go downhill, or we can simply just go around the circle, well, assuming it's a perfectly circular hill, of course, I mean, that those are not just those shapes. We could, they could be elliptical shapes, you know, and in this case, you might want to think of, remember, level curves? Remember when we did the level curve example for different temperatures, for different heights on, on the map? Well, so those lines represent the points in, in the mountain where the height is exactly the same. So that's exactly what we have when, when the directional derivative um, dotted with the unit vector is equal to zero. We're neither going up nor going down. That's, that's what we're trying to say here. All right. So, properties of the gradient here, well, let's look at those properties. So, if the gradient is zero, well, then the derivative, uh, the directional derivative is zero because, well, you would be dotting uh, a vector with a zero vector, naturally that should be the number zero. Well, so every time that the unit that the unit vector is orthogonal to the gradient vector well the directional ver derivative is going to be zero again we will neither go uphill nor downhill we will just go around circles along that level curve if you will okay now uh, the, the, the most important pieces of information here is how to find the direction of maximum increase or maximum decrease. Well, so what we're going to do is look at, uh, at the gradient and then because the gradient is a vector, again, that vector is like our database to store the rates of change in the direction of x and in the direction of y. Finding the magnitude of that vector and with the positive sign, that's going to give us the vector that is going to tell us. So it's going to tell us where to go with the steepest ascent. And if we change the sign to minus, that's going to give us a vector, a direction vector, which is going to tell us where to go. So it's down the hill with the steepest value. All right. Uh, so let's have a look at some examples. Um, 